Okay. How about we record it? Yeah, so we're on our way to Hebron, the second holiest city in the history of Judaism, uh, where the forefathers and foremothers are buried. And we drive through this area. Uh, what do you call it? Gush Etzion. Uh -huh. And so driving through here, there's an, it's an Arab town. What's the sentiment, the attitude that they have towards uh, people driving through here? It's always a road. I mean, I've got friends who live in Hebron, all right? But I personally, I'll check that it's an Israeli car if I'm on my own. You know, I'm going to have Israel. I won't, I'll go in a convoy. Just make sure there's already, already Israeli cars around. And I personally don't carry a gun. But I'll, like, make sure also that I don't drive in the dark. And sometimes this road is completely out of operation if there's been terror attacks and it's, all, it's empty of Israeli traffic. You have to find another way to go around. This, look, this is the outskirts of Hebron. This is called Halhul. Now this is where the terrorists came from who kidnapped the three Jewish teenagers. And as a result of that murderous, that murderous, murderous terror attack, the army went into the town. It's not a village. Have you noticed how we always call Arab places villages? Yeah. And if, we have, if it's a village, it's small, right? This isn't a village. This is a, a very, very large town. So the army went in and managed to get hold of the people who committed the terror attack. Track them down. Track them down. And I think they died in an explosion. You who know, did? I think, isn't it the one where the army, like, found them and blew up their house? And their house fell on them or something? Yeah. Did you watch did you watch Fowder at all? Have you seen any episodes? Yeah, I have. Is this not that I have a TV, but it's on YouTube. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 But, but, I don't know how it works. I mean, look, they obviously in Fowder you have to have a bit of. It's all condensed, isn't it? You've got an hour to probably show what the Israeli security service is doing two, three days. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But uh, did you see it? Well. I've seen a couple of episodes, you know, I've seen the, the first season. It's in English? No? No, oh. it's subtitled. Oh, okay. But, I mean, the Israeli security have to operate undercover. Very brave. Amazing what they do. Those are heroes. Yeah, they're heroes. Nobody's a hero for... I'm not a hero because I've got stabbed. People are heroes because they die in war or conflict. People are heroes if they put their life every day, you know, life on the line every day. And these people do it for the sake of the state of Israel. I think it's amazing. You can see how big it is, but it's vast. Yeah, oh, well, the town is vast. Yeah, yeah. You see, and area A, entry forbidden for Israeli citizens. Yeah. Into Halhul. That's right. So that is area A. You'll see the red sign. Uh-huh. How you do area A, B, and C. Yeah. Oh, it's so complicated. You have geographical terrain to take into account. Right, but were they... You were, have population. Were, those, were they drawn around population centers? You, you can't generalize. It's so many aspects have to be taken into consideration. Geography, water, uh -huh. politics, tribalism. Uh, what do you think of Professor Mordechai Kedar's uh, point that the... Oh, the Palestinian, the Emirates. The Emirates, I yeah. love, I love the idea. That, I mean, at least it's created. That these areas are, are, are essentially <laughs> uh, fiefdoms. Yeah. Right? Interesting, really, that really created. Interesting idea. Organized around clans. And that these clans should have their own cantons. That's right. Look at the, the Arabs I know who live in these areas, and I do have friendships with a lot of them, right? I haven't met one who wants a Palestinian state. They don't want it, they don't want to be put under the sovereignty and brutality of Mahmoud Abbas. They want Israeli sovereignty. That, that these are things that they, they can't voice these opinions, you know what I mean? You're saying because the uh, the, the thugs that operate as... The 
thugs who Political come, enforcers. Yeah, they come and they torture and they've executed people. And we're right here in the midst of them. Yeah. Look, I have a friend who lives... I'm trying to remember where he lives. Not, not far from here, one of these little towns. And he came to a meeting. I was there. There was a few of his people who came to a meeting with some so-called settlers, right? But religious Jewish observant people. And it was great. We had a great meeting and we were eating food together and sharing our stories and experience. And suddenly, or well, somehow, the Palestinian Authority found out that he'd been mixing with Jews. So they... they and by mixing? Just even having any kind of normalization. Uh -huh. So this guy was a musician. That's how we connected. And uh, the Palestinian Authority go into his house, and he's a young guy, and they steal his mm. musical instruments and they smash him up. I mean, how as punishment is that? As punishment for meeting with Jews. He not only has a musician's heart, he was so. Poor guy, he was so sad. So, you know what happened? So, the, these wicked settlers on the spot. We got out a hat and we all gave a little bit of money so we could buy some new instruments. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, of course it's nice. It's the right thing to do. We bought him a synthesizer and we play all of them. Casio synthesizer. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a glockenspiel. No, no, it was, uh, it was an old. Oh. You know. O-U-D. O-U-D.